Gunning for a 12th straight win. This is their longest win streak of the season, the longest win streak in the history of the franchise. Two seasons back when they won 14 in a row, that's when Lawrence Frank took over from Byron Scott. And for the most part, Marv, I think that you really have a team that's restructuring itself throughout the course of the season, especially the, over the last six weeks where they've really gotten a good understanding of the defensive sets that Lawrence Frank's, Frank wants to put in play night in and night out, and they are executing it very, very effectively at that end. The officials are Bennett Salvatore, David Jones, Ed Malloy, Shaquille O'Neal was out with a hyper-extended left knee. He's had slight swelling and fluing, fluid buildup in the knee. And he is going on the opening tip against Jason Collins, which is controlled by Miami. Gary Payton making his 15th start of the year, being played by Jason Kidd. A couple of guys who grew up in Oakland, California, and faced each other frequently in the schoolyards. O'Neal with a nice move. And to start off defensively by the Nets is to really have Collins just stay one-on-one -on -one with him. But obviously, if the big fella catches the ball that closely, tough to stop down deep. Jason Kidd coming off the 1-12. of 12. And the Nets last game Friday night in Atlanta. That's a case of miscommunication, so the ball back to Miami. And let's see if the Heat continue to establish Shaquille O'Neal down on the blocks. Everything runs through the big fella when healthy. It's a tough set when he touches it a lot. Collins opening up on O'Neal. Wade played by Carter. Shot clock down to five. Here's Peyton for three. Rebounded by Jefferson. Pretty good balance by the Heat this trip, but this is a team they want to try to push the ball against the Nets. Kristich way off. And Peyton with the save. For Miami, this is the finale of a three-game road trip. They play six of their next seven at home. Eric Anderson using the pick, slashing his way. This is Haslam with a rainbow, and it's caught by Collins. And a little thunderstorm coming down yes. with that rainbow just then. Carter backing his way on way. They collapse on him as Vince is able to bank it home. And obviously, more of on the open, we touched about how effective Vince Carter has been against the Heat. And obviously, with this team, Shaq will block a couple of shots at night, but this is a team you can travel in there and try to go to the basket against. Here's Wade over Carter, rebounded by Kidd. And the Nets set their offense. Jefferson being played by Anderson. You see Peyton cheating over. Kid off the fake, passed on a three, and rebounded by Anderson. Miami yesterday had a good one, lost to the Cavaliers, 106 to 99. The Heat had won their previous three. That's seven straight wins for Cleveland. O'Neal lost the dribble off his foot. Well, one of the things the Nets are so aware of, too, is the fact that how many times O'Neal touches the ball. I mean, he'll touch it 30, 35 times a night minimum in terms of running the offense. And not necessarily meaning he's going to go with it all the time. Haslam jumping out at the Carter, and it led to the turnover. Haslam all the way. Now, there's an example where Vince tried to go through the middle of two players. Vince got hit. Haslam's coming down the other end of the floor very slowly. So both of those guys took a shot there in that one play. Carter had nowhere to go and was bailed out. Foul is called on Peyton. And here they come through the middle, and it's Haslam and Vince really bumping into one another. I think Haslam got a count in the chin area. This has been a, uh, a team hard hit by injury. We mentioned the injury list earlier. First of all, Shaquille O'Neal and Dwayne Wade were, were question marks. Apparently, uh, Udonis Haslam drawing blood. And now Antoine Walker will, will check in. And it looked like the result of Vince Carter's head maybe bumping up against Haslam's face and nose. Miami athletic trainer Ron Cope doing the repairs on Udonis Haslam. Nets come off the win Friday night. 
And Atlanta beat the Hawks, did not play one of their better games. And Atlanta shot only 35% following the impressive wins over Detroit and Phoenix and Memphis, but came up with a road victory over a team that has given them a tough time. Their previous yeah. meeting in Atlanta lost to the Hawks in overtime. An official timeout called by Bennett Salvatore. Apparently there is blood on the floor. One of the ball boys takes care of it. And this is where if you're a ball boy, you have to go very slowly out there. You want to get as much air time as you possibly can. As a uh, one-time ball boy, I can relate to that. Jim. I was slow I motion. <laughs> Smiling and waving. Them. <laughs> and Haslam is headed back to the uh, Miami locker room. What did you do it with, like, towel on your feet and then wave to people as you were doing it? I had a whole procedure going, yes. <laughs> you must have seen me. I think you? I caught it. Jefferson using the pick, and the game is tied at four. Well, when he starts hitting that 15 to 18 foot jumper, he's a different body and a different player out there. And mentally, you can see him getting good bounce in his legs. Walker not able to handle it, saved by Wade. Wade moving pretty well here at the start and is able to hit on the floater. Yeah, he can float to the left, he can go to the right. But one of the things the Nets are trying to do is keep him away from the glass, but he is very tough when he decides to put it on the floor and go by people. And that rib injury sustained on the right side, that's the same injury that he suffered in the Eastern Conference Finals last season. Here's Kidd for three. And uh, Jason continues the struggle. As I mentioned, one of 12 and 37 minutes the other night against Atlanta, and he has missed his first two shots here tonight. And as a pro, what he needs to do is just continue to shoot, not track shots down because he very infrequently takes a bad shot, but he has to take the ones that are coming to him. O'Neal getting deep inside. Back comes Kidd. Much better off getting him going to his left shoulder rather than coming into the middle of the floor. Well defended. Offensive foul, illegal screen set by Jason Collins. And we'll see Shaq is going to post up again and see if they can get him to go to the right here and away from the basket, which is a very better, much better way to play Shaq than rather have him come to the middle of the floor and attack that rim. Wade spinning on Carter. And the rebound handled by Jefferson. Nets look to run. The Heat get back. Jefferson's pass deflected by Payton. Gary Payton in his 16th season out of Oregon State. 37 years old. Side is it. Free agent with Miami back in September. Carter gets the hop. A little bit of a friendly roll on the home floor, but Carter and Wade are going to try to keep one another busy at their respective ends of the floor, obviously looking to challenge one another. Game tied at six. They get it inside to O'Neal. Will not count. Offensive foul, and Pat Riley is upset. Boy, is he ever. Three or four steps out onto the floor. Get right into it. A nice little rotation there defensively. RJ there. Uh, I'm not so sure about the charge call. Might have been a little shuffle of the feet, actually. Ed Malloy, though, very compassionate as O'Reilly was in his face. Carter got it back. As Peyton, he has Wade on the wing. Wade, another floater by Dwayne Wade. Boy, I hope his rib is feeling okay as they step up and steal one going the other way. He looks pretty good to me. Walker to the crossover. Here's Walker. Rebounded by O'Neal. Miami has come out with much energy, and they now lead 10-6. Antoine Walker, Mark, coming onto the floor. is a great player from the standpoint of he can shoot the ball from long range and use his size and then floats it up softly, allowing Shaq to get that one. Here is Kristen. Well, the one question about Antoine Walker over the years is a member of the Boston Celtics, Atlanta Hawks, here in Miami, although he's played well off the bench, is shot selection. Right. Walker gets inside, although Antoine says, I'm a volume shooter. Do you ever say that? <laughs> volume, I like that. Crank it up and let it go. But he can give you nightmares, though, when playing his game. 
Jefferson over Anderson. Yes. So Richard Jefferson hitting from the left side from long range and now knocks it down from the right hand corner. Is he ever getting great rotation on the basketball, which means that he's really extending his hand and wrist at the basket? <laughs> oh, we try to put it behind the back. It was slapped away. Then it's picked off by Carter. Christich on the run. Wade is back. Christich with Serving it up on Dwayne Wade, who tried to challenge the shot. Well, you don't like to see the big guy get the outlet pass, but boy, did he ever deliver on the run. And great anticipation of who was going to try to block it on him. Well, Wade can leap, and yeah. that was his intention. <laughs> Anderson, rebound Carter, and that gets this crowd going. Here's Jefferson. That by Anderson, Kidd for three. And the ball back to Miami. Pretty good decision there by Jefferson to kick it out. But how about Christich? <laughs> well, go get it, big fella. Off to the races. Oh, what a finish. I'm not so sure. Carter with the drift pass. He was looking to go elsewhere. But that one was a pretty good decision with the way Christich finishes this one off. Game tied at 12. The Nets enjoying. Tomorrow night, yes, has an action-packed opening night lineup. First at 8.30, the premiere of the Emmy-winning Yes's Ultimate Road Trip Season 2 challenges ahead. And at 9 o'clock, catch Yankees batting practice today, followed by the Tri-State Quality Four pregame. And it all leads up to the first pitch of the 2006 season, Yanks and the A's at 10 o'clock. Our opening night lineup starts tomorrow at 8.30 only on Yes. Marv Albert, Jim Spinarco, or Continental Airlines Arena. The Nets in Miami tied at 12, just under five remaining in this opening quarter. Report from the uh, Heat bench, Giannis Haslam has suffered that bloody nose. Likely to return, I would think so. Nice pass as O'Neal finds Wade cutting to the rim. And a couple of guys starting to look at Shaquille O'Neal. When he touches the basketball, you start from a defensive standpoint, you start to think or cheat or look at him, and guys are allowed to go back door when that head turns. Carter using the screen. Rebounded by O'Neal. Antoine Walker pounding it. Walker came on for a Haslam. He's up front with Eric Anderson, Shaquille O'Neal, Peyton and Wade at the guard. Anderson open, 4-3. Got it by Kidd, fires it down. Here's Carter, slapped by Anderson and a foul. Anderson trying to knock the ball out of the hands of, of Carter. It's an on shooting foul. And what the Nets are trying to do is they're trying to get five guys rebounding and then five guys running the floor. And Vince kind of cheats out on this one as he gets slapped with the receive, receiving the ball down low. And basically, he kind of snuck out on that one, anticipated that Jason Kidd was going to come down with the rebound and just released quickly. Shannon Anderson coming on now for Derek Anderson. Shannon Anderson, an excellent defensive player. And here's Carter trying to hit the jumper over Shannon Anderson. Pat Riley subscribing to the play-by-play -play announcers rule. You cannot have more than one Anderson on the floor <laughs> at the same time. Make life easy made, for you. Made huh? that wise decision, <laughs> Shandon, for Derek. Thank you, Pat. Yes. As a former broadcaster, you can relate to that. Walker passed on a three. Here's Walker curling his way inside and then hits the follow. Yeah, and it's interesting. Most people don't know how tall he is. He's 6'9 or so and can shoot the ball from long range. But that's where I think he's the most effective when he really decides to bring it 10 feet in and use his size and his little flip shots. And as you can see, Miami doing it down low. Walker with a nice box out. And he can handle it, obviously. Walker with a nice pass inside, slapped away from Peyton, and last touch by the net. Now Michael Doliak will, will check in for Miami. Doliak yesterday in Cleveland in the starting lineup in the absence of the injured Shaquille O'Neal. Timeout is called, 3.05 remaining. In the first, you're watching Nets basketball.
Check out the Nets early bird special. Next season, the Nets will be unveiling a new red road jersey. And it'll be hand signed by Vince Carter. Purchase your full season tickets for 2006, 2007 now and get your jersey plus other exclusive early bird benefits. This offer available for a limited time. Some restrictions do apply. Visit njnets.com or call the Nets Vonage Hotline at 1-800-7-NJ-NETS. Clifford Robinson has come on for the Nets, replacing Jason Collins. Here's Wade looking for the opening. Wade to the fadeaway, came up short, but Miami maintains possession. Uh -oh, Wade looks like he's injured a little bit on the left side. Wade hobbling toward the bench, and Pat Riley took the 20 second time out. And even by his standards, Marv, I know he has the capabilities and the athletic ability to put some crazy shots in, but that one was a little bit out of control at the very end. And he may just have extended himself more so than what he really wanted to. Let's see how he lands. He's up in the air okay. Yeah, it looks like the left leg dragged on that play a little bit, but I'm not sure what they're really tending to right now. But notice how far he extends away when he goes to the left. He really extends himself out, and then that left leg, he kind of plants on the whole foot coming down rather than the ball of his foot. Wayne Wade coming into tonight's game with the bruised ribs. Says he's all right and remains on the floor. And Goliak, a little different look down there than Shaq, I would say. Walker strip. Miami gets back as Kidd sets up. Kristich with pretty good position down deep. Carter able to get back to it. Last touch by Wade. Dana Kristich missed the last meeting between the Nets and Miami, sat out because of the flu. Clifford Robinson. Start of the game had a Nets career high 23 points hit four from downtown. Carter goes behind the back and draws the foul on Derek Anderson. I should say oh, Shannon, uh, Shannon Anderson. And it's a non shooting foul, which was a proper call. You may have caught the reaction by Vince Carter. Watch his reaction. He's mad at himself because he. Faded the Anderson up into the air, had him where he wanted to, and should have shot the ball and crank up the volume of shots. I guess it comes down to right. Team foul number three on Miami. Here's Jefferson knocked aside, kept alive by Vaughn, who just came on. Robinson and Vaughn with the shot clock rolling down. Rebounded by Dolia. One of the toughest things to do: come right off the bench and have to shoot it. Walker on the spin. Kristich got a piece of it. Loose ball picked up by Peyton as Jefferson went flying in the path of a Peyton. Peyton way off, and a loose ball foul is called against Miami. That set will not make the highlight reel, that's for sure. A little crazy pushing up and down. We'll take a look. Oh, Walker with a two handed push. There's a reason he got in there so easily for the layup. Foul is on Walker. That's his first. Team foul number four on the Heat. Nets have missed their last five shot attempts. They trail 16-12 as we come up on a minute and a half to play in the first. Kristich off the double team, working hard for that shot. Heaved it up, and then Kristich not able to handle. Here's Walker. Doliak blocked from behind by Kristich. Vaughn pushing it down. Carter, nice shovel pass. Jefferson with the reverse. Oh, what a great decision by Carter just then also. RJ with the strong finish with the reverse, but Carter just stopping at the 12-foot mark and dishing rather than picking up a charge. Key to that play. First points for the Nets in four minutes and six seconds. Foul is called as Wade was setting up up top and was fouled by Kristich. Kristich defensively right there. And here's the stop by Carter, just enough to get away from the charge, release it to Jefferson for his strong finish. Next foul puts the Nets over the limit. Peyton with room for three, rebounded by Jefferson. 
this could be a two for one opportunity right here if they want it. Lawrence Frank likes to go with Vince Carter at the point and does well with it. Troubles to Christian. Boy, he's making nice decisions here. Peter running an extra body at him, trying to slow him down a bit, but Vince making nice decisions and the, the clock shot works in their favor for the two for one. And that's assist number four for Carter. Wade with the good look from straight away. Miami up 18-16, and now the Nets will hold for a final shot of this first quarter. And probably go to Vince Carter. Usually they do that in these situations, and Vince tries to get it. Not going to allow him to get it right now, though. Good job by Anderson. Final seconds. Carter putting a move on Peyton. Fires for three and hits. They'll review it, but he got it off on time. Vince Carter with a terrific start. Seven points, four assists. And Mark, I'm not so sure this is the purest of shots for him because he really didn't get his footwork down to start it off. But you see the strength of Vince Carter coming into play with that long-range shot to knock back three for the Nets. After one, it's the Nets 19, the Heat 18. That three-pointer by Vince Carter at the buzzer will hold up after the officials reviewed it. Well, this Tuesday on My Nine, the Nets continue their homestand. They'll take on the Atlanta Hawks uh, right here at the New Jersey Meadowlands. I'll be on hand with Mark Jackson starting at 7.30. Nets of the Hawks on My Nine. And all first-round Nets playoff games that are available to the Yes Network and conflict with a Yankee game will be shown over the air on WWOR My 9. That announced earlier today by the Nets and the, the Yes Network. Second quarter underway. How about no foul shots to this point? No free throws. Nets on top for the first time off that three by Carter at the end of the first quarter. Here is Shannon Anderson for three. And it's picked up by Christus. Shaquille O'Neal back on the floor. Played 10 minutes in the first quarter. Hit two of three for four points along with three rebounds. Carter guarded by Anderson. The lead for Robinson. Christich, how about that for ball movement? Now, Robinson had a sense that Shaquille O'Neal was right on his back, and he was thinking that Shaq was going to really whack one out of bounds on him. So a nice decision by Robinson. Good interior passing so far by the Nets. 7-0 run by the Nets. O'Neal, Christich with the block. O'Neal comes right back. It counts, and the foul. How do you feel if you're Clifford Robinson trying to stop the big fella? You need some help. And Kristich will come in initially right here to help with a nice little touch block. A little strength takes over from that point, though. A little strength. <laughs> he's fun to watch when he's down deep. Shaq has looked pretty good. Coming back after missing two games with uh, the knee problem and hits a free throw. Three-point play by O'Neal. So he has seven points. The game is tied at seven. Zoran, uh, Zoran Planinic checking in for the first time. And here's Robinson for three. I should say the game tied at 21 with a minute and a half gone by in this second quarter. Here is O'Neal. And a traveling violation is called. A better job by Christich that trip down the floor. Pat Riley not happy with it, but let's see if he takes a little slide. Right foot is it? Yep, right foot was his pivot foot. He slid that right along the floor. Good call from the official. Jason Capono just checked in. Three-year man from UCLA defending on Zorn Planetich. Jefferson. Pass picked off by Doliak. going behind the back. Here's Wade. What a move by Dwayne Wade. How do you stop it? I'm not so sure. Jefferson trying to stay in front of him a little bit. But boy, in the open floor, you really have to recognize and find Wade and hope that you can slow him down a little bit quicker than what they didn't do that trip. That's 10 points for Wade. The gorgeous crossover got the step on Jefferson. Strong start 
for Dana Christich, opening up four of six from the field, eight points, two block shots. And the thing about him is that a lot of people think the reason that the Nets have really turned the corner is him, a little rise and finish against Wade. Good positioning at the offensive end, and then he hits that little 10-foot jumper. So the whole game starting to really come together for Christich and putting up nice numbers to boot. Anad coming off a rare off game since the All-Star break. The other night in Atlanta, just two of five, four points. But uh, coming out strong here against Miami. Jefferson's pass, got by Christich. Run down by Robinson. Jefferson. Ford with one on the shot clock. Rebounded by Anderson. We are early in the second quarter. Miami 23, and that's 21. Marvell from Spinarco from Continental Airlines Arena. Here's Doliak. Seen tonight on the Yes Network and also once again on NBA TV. Christich facing up on Dolia. Reverse pivot there. I'll tell you, he is really at a level right now that the confidence in his entire game. And that's a beautiful reverse pivot. As Wade draws the foul. Wade Wade does not appear to be moving as if his ribs are bothering him. No, he's not. I mean, he's, he's a tough out, obviously, with his quickness. But watch him with the reverse pivot as he steps away. And watch the space that's created. See that space right there? That allows the big guy to step back and flip the shot up without really being contended from the defensive end. Foul was called on Christich. And it's the first time that uh, he will get a rest. He sits down after picking up a second foul. Ten points for Nadat Christer. Wayne Wade has gone all the way. That's point number 11 for Wade. Marv, I know you'll remember the name Jack Sickle, the one-time yes. Seattle Supersonic Center from back in, I guess that was around the late 70s or so. When he, he had a reverse pivot. He shot the ball differently because it was over his head, but it was the same type of mentality, stepping away to get your shot like that. Miami trainer Ron Cole checking out Udonis Haslam. Went out after suffering that uh, bloody nose. That's a jump ball being in call. Getting back to Jack Sigma, who is currently an assistant coach on the Seattle Sonic staff. And had that most unusual, I guess you call it, it was a, a, a jump shot. I don't know yeah. if he got off the floor that maybe a couple of inches, but he held the ball way over his right. head, impossible to block the shot. Yeah, set up by the reverse, and then, yeah, you're right. It was kind of like it was a soft shot, but it was almost a fling from behind his head. I know Jack will be very pleased that he called his shot a fling. Nice move by Vaughn and draws the foul. And I'm sure he'll be just as equally happy to hear that you said he couldn't jump. <laughs> well, correct, yes. Capone called on the on the foul. It's turned into a Jack Sigma rip session here. But we don't mean it to be. No, not at all. First free throw of the night for the Nets. Vaughn, following the good move, will shoot two. Sigma was a great player. I'm just oh, you yeah, stop it. <laughs> Jim, the damage has been done. Well, that's true. It has been. We can't undo it. Miami with the one-point lead coming into tonight. The Nets four and a half behind Miami. Nets with a long shot chance to catch the Heat for second best record. In the East, I'm sure what Pat Riley is most concerned about, though, is the season series when it comes down to that possibility because the Nets up two games to one. And you never know. That's a traveling violation. Nets, including tonight, have 11 games remaining to the regular season and playing for seating and home court advantage. The magic number two in terms of clinching the Atlantic division. Philadelphia at home tonight to the uh, Knicks up by seven late in the first quarter. Nice play by Philly. Here's Wade with Kid back. Bad pass by Wade. Wade showing his quickness. Here's Wade firing one up out of control. Anderson missed for the funnel. And last touch by Miami. And Wade very upset with himself. 
as athletic a play as it was, I just don't think you're going to get that call, even as good as Wade is. Well, Wayne upset that he did not get the, the foul call, but uh, that was a bad shot <laughs> in terms of the selection. It sure was. Here's Robinson for three. Yes. Clifford yeah. Robinson hit four from downtown the last time the Nets played Miami. And that's where they really need him coming off the bench because both of these teams are concerned about transition going up and down the floor. The less they run up and down, the more it looks like a playoff game to me with the half-court sets. And Cliff Robinson coming off the bench has given the Nets a real big boost all season long. Great shooter from the right corner. Jay-Z and P. Diddy. Court side, just a couple of guys brought by to talk basketball. <laughs> just and like business. us. <laughs> Absolutely. And which brings me to tonight after the uh, post game right here on Yes, it's the premiere of GMC Truck presents Center Stage. And the guest, Jay Z. Hear what Jay Z has to say about his rise to superstardom and owning part of the Nets franchise. It's the premiere of GMC Truck presents Center Stage. Jay Z tonight after the post game with an encore presentation 10 o'clock right here on Yes. And Adonis Haslam has made his return. Seven and a half remaining in the first half. Payton, nice little teardrop from Gary Payton. That showed a little bit of his own that trip, but Payton just kind of probed his way through it and with that little floater, good seam work there to break down the zone off the dribble. Nets up by one. Jason Collins, who just checked back in with a very aggressive pick. And he's called for the illegal screen. That's his second foul. Yeah, the big guys get the call sometimes. With Many times it's the guard starting into the set too quickly that forces the big guy to get hit with the moving screen. Vince Carter back for Zoran Planinich. Hey. So the Nets now have a backcourt of Kidd and Vaughn. Carter with Robinson and Collins up front. Collins defending on O'Neal. Walker wide open for three. Rebounded by O'Neal. And they'll reset. Here is Shaq. Hold for the offensive foul for the second time tonight. Yeah, big clear out. Collins once again. Pat Riley not happy. But watch for a left elbow here to guide his way right into the neck area of Jason Collins. I mean, with the perspective that Pat Riley has on this call down deep on his side of the floor, boy, it has no argument on that one with the leading of the left. Wayne Wade sitting down for the first time tonight. He's the high man for Miami with 12. Shaq jumping out on Carter. Here's Carter, the fadeaway. Yes. Here's Carter on fire. And the Nets now lead 30-27. Carter, nine points, four assists. Not a bad shot when you come off the bench, check in, and that's your first attempt. Works through Vince. Here is Peyton. Reflected out by Miami. The Nets at 43 and 28. They've won 11 in a row. They've taken 21 of their last 24 here at home going up against a Miami team that is 48 and 24 they have won three of the last four they come off the loss yesterday to the Cavaliers in Cleveland here's kid for three yes well Jason Kidd with the one for 12 in Atlanta Friday night missed his first three shots here tonight and knocks down the three That's the only way you get out of it though you just got to keep waiting the ball out when it comes and you have a shot everybody expects you to shoot it you must shoot it Capono. And he can shoot. Jason Capono out of UCLA hits on his first shot attempt. Put up huge numbers at UCLA. Changed his shot around a little bit because that's a different look than he had in college. It was a little more unorthodox than that jumper right there. Interesting matchup with Walker guarding Vaughn. Here's Robinson. He was wide open. And Peyton moves it across. Met by Vaughn. Walker trying to post up on Robinson. Good job by Robinson fronting Walker. Peyton checking the clock. Shot clock down to five. 
Here's Capono from the other side. Now Peyton just loves to back people in, the guards on the left side of the floor in particular. And a nice read there by Capono, too, noticing that his man eventually was going to release for the double team just to give him a free 15-footer. Nets up 33-31, just under five to play in the first half. Carter facing the double. Goes behind the back as a wide open Jacques Vaughn. And able to take advantage. Better arc than the shot for Jacques Vaughn that trip than his first two shots that he took with Vince giving the basketball up. It's interesting how they're going with Peyton guarding him at the offensive end. Here's Capoto. He hit his previous two. The rebound is picked off the floor by Robinson. That's why Lawrence Frank was yelling out when he touched it. He's a shooter. Imagine you have to identify that to your team. <laughs> That's it. We hope not. <laughs> Here's Kidd for three. Caught him with the rebound and was stripped. He thought he was fouled. Walker lost it on a reach in. And the next field was last touched by Walker, but the official in the backcourt, Bennett Salvatore, had the angle, said no, Robinson deflected it out. And now apparently they, they're calling a foul. And Vince Carter, Capono looks like he strips the ball cleanly. And Vince Carter having a couple of words. Well, that's the... Uh, the Indication of the foul is a technical foul on Carter. Bennett Salvador, he just teed up Vince after the what Vince perceived there's no call down his end at the offensive end. And uh, Clifford Robinson felt that Antoine Walker had deflected that ball out of bounds, so Miami got the call. Here's Wade who just checked back in, able to go glass. Another beautiful move by Dwayne Wade. He's 6 of 10 for 14 points. And it's amazing to me how much mileage he gets out of the last step and floats to his left. Here's Kidd, and he was left wide open and then fouled by Walker. Nice lead pass. Kidd will go to the line. Foul on Antoine Walker. A little old school basketball right here. Kid comes off the high screen and cuts to the basket. Good delivery. And the finish, the Nets not really taking advantage of all the screens, but that time Antoine Walker not stepping across to really help his teammate out. Another assist for Vince Carter. That's six in this first half. And the Nets with 12 assists on their 16 field goals. Nets now lead at 38. 33, six points for Kidd. As we come up on three minutes to play in the half. Wade, again, able to go glass. Oh, <laughs> going glass, but going up the ladder also. <laughs> Boy, that, he's making it look easy, but that's not an easy shot right there. 16 wow. for Wade. Jefferson, who checked back in, being played by Wade with help. Anderson over. Here's Carter for three. Bodies hitting the deck. Wade stopped by, by Robinson. And now gets it down. Peyton. He says, let's regroup. Wade played by Jefferson. Haslam. Well, he hesitated for an instant, but able to knock down his second field goal. And we are getting a chance to see Wade really running the traffic also. I mean, he's putting up huge numbers this year from the scoring standpoint at 28 a game, but really doing a great job passing the ball with just a little under seven assists per game. Really directing traffic. Well, the last time the Nets and Heat met in early February, Vince Carter had a season-high 10 assists, and he has been doing it. In the assist column tonight, he has nine points along with six assists. And the main reason is that the Heat are deciding to run a bo an extra body at him, but Vince is creating some opportunities. But here you see the double team. He releases with the back. Behind the back pass to Jacques Vaughn. Here's another one over the top to Jason Kidd. So Vince really doing a good job of directing traffic as is Wade down the other end in terms of releasing the ball and not tracking and hunting down their shots. 
Anat Kristich, the high man for the Nets with 10. Vince Carter with 9. Dwayne Wade, 7 of 11 shooting, 16 points. Nets up by 1 as we approach 2 minutes to play in the first half. Here's Kidd who's feeling it now and hits again. So Jason Kidd has worked his way out of that one for 12 the other night against the Hawks. And one of the ways to do that, Marv, is to follow the ball and make sure you're moving your body towards it to get ready to shoot. Wade, Doliak with the rebound and a push-off. Foul on Doliak. Doliak is first, team's first the final Miami with their fourth team foul. Marv Albert, Jim Spinarco at Continental Airlines Arena. The Nets in Miami, early start, 6 o'clock start here on this Sunday night as the Nets go for their 12th straight win and try to make it official by clinching the Atlantic Division. Philadelphia, however, in front of the Knicks in their game in Philly playing the second quarter. Wade was tied up. The magic number coming into tonight, two, and he combination of net wins and Philadelphia losses adding up to two would, would make it official. The Nets are 10 games in front, so it is academic. Controlled by Kidd off a deflection from Jefferson. There's Kidd foul from behind by Peyton, and that puts Miami over the limit. Kidd will go to the line. And it gives us a great F understanding of what goes through Kidd's mind. Watch when he catches the ball right now and starts. He's going to try to get his right shoulder ahead of Peyton, which he does. But it starts almost at half court. Watch his right shoulder now. It's going to tuck down and try to get around Peyton. And once he realizes he's around him with the right shoulder, he knows he has him where he wants him. And in worst case, will end up at the line. A little affectionate chatter between <laughs> Jason Kidd and and Gary Payton, Jason once told me that several years ago he made the mistake. And Jason Kidd is not a guy who talks much on the court, right. but he made a mistake. So he got a little overconfident. He was having a good game against Payton and said some things to him. I said that was the worst thing he could have ever done. Payton went on to have an incredible game. You don't want to get him started. No, when you're going to trash talk, you pick guys like me. And you trash talk against me. <laughs> you know it's not going to come back to haunt you. Our production staff was doing that <laughs> earlier at the meeting. Affectionately, though, oh, wasn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> Peyton's played well. Five assists, five rebounds, starting for the injured Jason Williams, who's out with a knee problem. It's now leading 41. 37 as this uh, first half closes down. Wade facing the double team, finds the open man. Peyton not looking to shoot. Here's Anderson. He had nowhere to go. Bad pass. Deflected, though, by the Nets. Yeah, unfortunately for Clifford Robinson, he made a good play there and deflected the ball, unfortunately, because that was going to go right over to Pat Riley on the sidelines. Shot clock down to six. Here's Wade on the pullback over Kidd. Robinson with the rebound. Got another two for one opportunity coming down. Here's Kidd. Wade able to keep it alive. Unless Frank wanted a popping relation, you're not going to get it. And Wade not able to hit Goliath. A pass behind him. Here comes Kidd directing traffic. Carter with the spin. Carter draws the foul. A little open ended play once again with Wade going down one end. A nice track down by Kidd. Kidd was really looking to give that ball up to RJ on the break. Let's see if he puts this thing. What is that? I would think that qualifies as a palming violation. And Carter nearly gets this thing to drop as he gets it to sit and just hang on the rim for half a second. He was fouled by Shannon Anderson. That's point number 10 for Vince Carter. Now to a half minute remaining in this first half. The Nets up by five. And the Nets have one to give if they want it. The foul to give also. Off the weave, Wade takes it, able to make his way down low and is fouled by Robinson. That's two. 
on Robinson. And Wade just continues to impress. Watch him go through the D to his left and split them. And boy, does that ever give you great opportunities and you're gonna end up at the line. He goes to the line about nine times a game, so just amazing how quick this can help, but the understanding of how you can break people down off the dribble makes the most difference in your play. Wayne Wade spent part of the offseason bulking up in his hometown of uh, Chicago with strength coach Tim Grover, who at one time worked with Michael Jordan, added five pounds of muscle. He's up to 217. Of course, when anyone adds weight, they say it's muscle. <laughs> five pounds of, of course, it's muscle. It's muscle. That's what I tell people, Mark. My five pounds of fat. <laughs> right. Muscle fell from my chest to my belly. <laughs> Good, Jim. He goes to the line 11 times per game, not nine. So it's two more per game that Wade goes. So it's even more impressive, that number. 18 for Wade. That's up by three. Holding for a final shot in this First half, Carter putting a move on Peyton. Here's Carter firing one up. I am not sure what that was. <laughs> and then Wade with the two-hander. Lands on the crowd, and that's the end of the first half. It's the Nets, 42. Miami, 39. Stay tuned for Heineken at the half. High point men. Thus far, Dwayne Wade with 18, Nanette Kristich, Vince Carter each have 10. Nets try to make it 12 straight wins, 11 straight, their longest win streak of the season. And within the 11, they have beaten six playoff teams. Eight of the 11 have come against the Western Conference. Jefferson gets inside. Nice lead pass thrown, and the Nets now lead 44-39. And a good set. That came right from Lawrence Frank in the bench in terms of how they want to start and establish the third quarter. Good cut there by Jefferson off the high screen. Five assists now for Kidd. Six quarter, and a beautiful play defensively by Jefferson getting the tie-up. A good start for Richard Jefferson at defensive end here also getting his hands on the ball and I'm not so sure they had it for a period of time there but Jefferson liked the call. Now you got to try to steal this tip. Both of these guys get off the floor pretty well. Jefferson should come this way between Kidd and Christich if he can get the jump. Salvatore will do the honors. Nice toss. Oh. That's a pretty good toss. There it was. And Shaq nearly took it. Yes. He timed it pretty well. I thought Shaq was going to come up with that one. That's control. Kid played by Peyton. Carter. And guarded by Anderson. Goes to the step back. Rebounded by Haslam. Single. Back to the uh, lineup at the start of the game. There's Anderson. Gil O'Neal, Udonis Haslam on the front line, Gary Payton, Dwayne Wade in the backcourt. Here is O'Neal backing his way and a foul. Foul is called on Collins. That is his third. Collins using the two hands to try to stop Shaquille O'Neal that trip. Lawrence Frank is indicating that he thought, Lawrence did, that he had the forearm on him. So difficult to officiate. Make any calls involving Shaquille O'Neal, both the four against. You're absolutely right on that. He looks like he's in better shape, though. Wade able to sweep by, and Richard Jefferson upset with himself. Wade Wade has 20. And as Pat Sullivan, assistant coach in the net, said at halftime, they're going to try to get him to shoot the ball from the outside a little bit more. Not successful on that trip. Collins left wide open. Prestich with the rebound, had it knocked aside. Jefferson is fouled. Haslam came over looking for the block and picks up the call. That's his first. Yeah, Chris is getting off the floor quickly on this one. Both Shaquille O'Neal goes down, and Wade came out of that rubbing his knee, or it looked like so. Uh, but Jefferson very active on the offensive glass, uh, glass along with Kristich. Jefferson to the line for the first time at 81% free throw shooter. That's now lead 45. 41. Nine points for Jefferson. Gary Payton checking with 
Pat Riley over to Miami Bank. O'Neill. Payton with the shot clock rolling down. Rebounded by Kristich. Good box out by Kristich. Here's Jefferson. Payton able to stay with him. Kid fires for three. And Haslam is on the rebound. These teams, Marv, are really doing a good job of balancing the floor at their offensive end, not allowing transition buckets. Payton. Gary Payton has been off. It's only a second field goal, two of seven. But it brings Miami within two. Collins setting the pick. Carter. Yes. And that's just a great read by Vince Carter. Did you notice how Shaquille O'Neal came out and tried to kind of veer him away from the basket? If you do that, you got to get a guy going east to west, and that Shaq did not really stop him at all. O'Neal feeling for Collins. Yes. Collins usually gets the assignment one on one, which is rare with the NBA because most teams do run an extra player at Shaq at least. And Collins does hold his ground pretty well. Collins, though, playing with the uh, three personals. Carter again. They're going to have to make a judgment here what they're going to do with Carter, too, because he's really starting to warm it up. He's played well, as we've documented already, against the Heat three times this year. You just see it in his body. Have that 51 point game against Miami tied a career high. Jefferson try to tie it up again. And then had a triple double against Miami to Vince Carter. Here is Haslam with the shot clock rolling down. And foul is called on O'Neill, a pushing foul for Jackson. That's his third. It all started defensively. We've talked about the Nets, the way they're picking up their defensive end of the floor. And it's a little bit of a trigger, the uh, defense by Jefferson out front, and there's Shaquille O'Neal pushing Collins around a little bit, but execution at the defensive end has really been steady for the Nets, beyond steady over this good winning streak that they put together. Collins, yes. And the Nets have their biggest lead of the night. It leads to a timeout called by Pat Riley. And Pat Riley understands that the Nets are getting the rhythm, not only at the defensive end, but also when Collins can get his little sex shot to go, he feels and senses that they're coming around at the offensive end also. Once again, the Nets have done an excellent defensive job in doing it against one of the highest scoring teams in the league with Miami averaging 101 points per game. And they're really focusing on trying to stop Shaq one on one down deep. And he's really you got to keep your body in close to him. And if you could start closely with him, you notice how tight he is to begin. It's when you give Shaq an extra foot or foot and a half when you're not up against them, where he can then make his moves. But Collins does a great job of just going body to body. He can kind of almost squeeze a sheet of paper through there. It's so tight. And defensively, it just starts a good uh, positioning for Collins. It's time. Collins and Kristich going against Shaq, but off the steal. Here's Kidd to Jefferson. How he tracks people down, it's amazing. Kidd had that open layup to a point, but understanding where his teammates are on the floor at all times and making sure they get something out of that play. 8-0 run for the Nets. Wade, oh, come on. to pull up. And the ball. Miami maintains possession. The, the outside official, David Jones, Calls it the other way. Apparently, Bennett Salvatore was handing the ball to the Nets, and now they confer, and it is that ball. Yeah. Good work by Lawrence Frank and the Nets team on the bench reacting to the call, but the most important thing is that the officials confer and get it, the correct call out of that. Nets up by 10. Their biggest lead of the night. Back comes Miami. Getting back to the subject of Shaquille O'Neal as Wade gets it back out. And there's Anderson. Derek Anderson is acquired earlier this season from the Rockets in exchange for the rookie Gerald Finch. Able to 
knock it down from three-point range. Jefferson gets the high lead and is fouled by O'Neal, and that's four on Shaq. I was talking about how they say Wade got him first. So a foul on Wade, not, not O'Neal. Yeah, you see O'Neal comes over to help out, and that's probably a good time for Wade not to slap from behind, especially because let your big guy do what he's supposed to do, just clog up the middle of the floor. Jimmy, you're talking about the single coverage at uh, the other end against uh, Shaquille O'Neal. But of course we're not seeing the same Shaquille right. O'Neal at, at this point. He missed his two previous games. Had that hyper extended left knee. He looked sharp I thought at the start. But now you can see the wear and tear. He's right. committed several offensive fouls. He's turned it over a couple of times. Not the imposing force you usually see. Just seven points. It's 22 minutes on the floor. And the thing about him, too, is I know it's, it's injury-related, what you're talking about, but body-wise, he looks pretty trim, considering it's hard to say that when you look at Shaq and he's so massive, but it doesn't look like he's carrying extra weight. Now played by Kristen, as he gets inside, and that will not count the foul before <laughs> the uh, shot attempt. It is called on Kristen. It is a non-shooting foul. Worth seeing again, though, huh? Wow. <laughs> That looked okay. That looked imposing. <laughs> as I said, not as imposing as you usually see. And here is Wade taking to the rim. Well, he seems to be able to change direction in the air, which is almost impossible to think about, but he can do it. And he gets off the floor in such a hurry. This will be interesting to see how the Heat react now over the last six minutes of this quarter. Hard up. And that will count. It's a ball attack. O'Neal. Yeah, Shaq actually got his finger caught, I think, on either the net or the rim on that one, which did not allow him to get to the ball as quickly as, it, as what he would have liked to have had. And you hate when that happens, you know? Yeah, I've had that happen never in my career. <laughs> Just under six to go here in the third. A palming violation is called on Gary Payton. Weren't we requesting that before? Let's take a look at this one. Uh, <laughs> I think so. That's one of the things the officials have to focus on a little bit more diligently. That's up 57, 48. Okay. It has been turnover city for the Miami Heat here in this third quarter. Carter passed on a three and hits him two. He's had the hot hand, 18 points. Vince Carter. And that, that's really how this game's supposed to be played, Marv, in terms of take a long shot and force it. But this game is designed to bait people defensively and then get closer shots. And that's just perfectly executed there by Vince Carter in a smart play. And he gets an easy 17-footer rather than a long heave, which he can make. Miami taking a 20 second time out here's what you're talking about and just watch how he closes he gets the good fake he gets his positioning nice little lift on the jump shot but it's how the game's supposed to be played reminder tomorrow night yes with an opening night lineup that you do not want to miss first at 8 30 the premiere of the any winning yeses ultimate road trip Season two, and then at nine, it's Yankees batting practice today, followed by the Tri-State Quality Ford pregame. And uh, that will lead up to the first pitch of the 2006 season. Yanks of the A's at 10 o'clock tomorrow night. The opening night lineup starts tomorrow at 8.30. Only on yes. I don't know about you, Mark, but I'm ready for baseball. How about you? You know, I, I make sure to catch at least four or five in, in person. In fact, I look forward during the playoff run. I usually, when I'm on the road, will try to catch a game. Yeah. Unless it's a little nippy out there. Well, you know. Bundle up. It will be a little nippy. Bundle up. Thank you. <laughs> That's 7 of 11 from the field in this third quarter and have not turned it over. In contrast to Miami, they have turned it over four times. Brandon Anderson has checked back in, as has Jason Capono hit a couple of jumpers back in the second quarter. Kid O'Neill remains, as does Dwayne Wade. Jack stumbling, gets it out to Wade. Wade to the crossover. Oh, what a move. Dwayne Wade to the rim. So he now has.
is 24. Now, Wade comes off a sensational performance yesterday in his duel with LeBron James. Wade had a season-high 44. James put up 47, and Wade with a franchise record 21 in the fourth quarter, though Miami lost in Cleveland. That's up by nine, just under five left in this third quarter. Wade again. And this is where Lawrence Frank, well, yeah, he recognizes right off the bat that Wade is starting to warm this thing up. They're going to bring it and walk at the half court and call a timeout. Good judgment. Well, maybe they're not. <laughs> the kid was trying to steal one with Carter with half the team walking off the floor. Good decision, though, by Lawrence Frank. Jason thinking of the old <laughs> fake timeout because Miami relaxed, and sometimes you can get away with that. Bring back the Jets, I guess, huh? Fake spike. There you go. Dan Marino. <laughs> sure. Tri-State Ford presents tonight's key matchup. Both guys have done well. They sure have. Lighting it up with the shooting is way starting to warm it up as we just touched on, which would probably instigate Vince Carter at the offensive end. The both of them doing a nice job with especially Vince with six assists versus the three for Wade. So this this will probably pick up some steam this game right now and turn into a real fun game to watch. Although it's rare that they have gone against each other, but they are the leading scorers for their respective teams. Coming up on four minutes to play in this third quarter, the Nets with a seven-point lead. Here is Carter with a rainbow in the face of Antoine Walker and then away from the play. The basket counts. The foul is on Jason Capono. So that sets up a potential three-point play. A push on the part of Capono, who got involved with Kristich. The one shot coming up for Nanad, his first appearance at the line. How about Carter? Ten of his 20 have come here in the third quarter. Unconventional three-point play for the Nets, and they have a 10-point lead. Well, Carter will take the challenge, like you mentioned, Marv, which is accurate in terms of Wade and Carter not matching up against one another, scoring-wise they are. Nice delay by Wade on the head fake to draw the foul. It is on Jefferson, and for the Nets, their 13th foul, Miami has four. Head fake to draw the foul. It is on Jefferson. And for the Nets, their 13th foul. Miami has four. Anderson will throw in. Walker being played by Christich. Got it down low. Nice pass. Walker to O'Neal. Very gently throwing that one through because that had the makings of taking down the basket if he wanted to, the big fella. Nine points, eight rebounds for Shaquille O'Neal. Both teams showing zones at their end of the court. There's an alley-oop way off the mark, but it's saved by the Nets. Carter with a runner. Carter slapped it away from O'Neal, and they get the new shot clock. Jefferson, Wade with the rebound. Here is Wade. There goes Carter. Carter is fouled, locked up by Wade, who extends the hand. Vince Carter, foul on Wade, his second. The lead thrown by Kidd, who was taken down. And Carter was taken down by Wade. Well, it's, an, it's incredible in a couple of senses there with Carter slipping out and Kidd getting the ball to him. But I just think Wade can close on you just so quickly, even though it's obviously a foul. Trying nothing more than a, an aggressive foul. I don't think there was any intent there or flagrant foul. It's a good call from the officials, but it's amazing just how quickly he can charge his battery up and get himself going from one speed to the next. Twenty-one now for Carter. That's 17 straight for Vince Carter. 20 or more. And the Nets back up by 10. A 
and you have to repeat it again, Marv. He's touched on it before with the defense that they're showing. Three minutes or so left in this third quarter. Seems like it should only be the second quarter when you look up and see the Heat with 54 points, but it is the third. And he's sixth in scoring in the NBA. Once again, Shaq having his difficulties and called for the offensive foul. He's been frustrated. Shaquille O'Neal collecting number four. Well, I just think what the Nets are doing in there, I mean, Clifford Robinson kind of flails just a little bit. I don't think he got hit that much, and that's what Pat Riley is up off the bench, again, protecting his center, which he has to do. Shaq with his fourth foul. Remaining on the floor, no signs of a uh, substitution. Oh, look out. And that's number five on O'Neal as he caught Carter. With an elbow, Vince has been a pinata here in the third quarter. And you know, you know, Marv, when you take Shaq, and this is great, Christich comes out. And I'm not so sure Shaq is moving, though, just to call it. You know, it didn't appear as if his shoulder was moving. Let's take another look. You just run into him, and you're going to bounce off him. That's the problem with it, but... I like the fact that Lawrence Frank has Carter and Kristich with the two-man action, forcing the big fella away from the basket because he just can't deal with Carter with his quickness. So it's a great play offensively with the pick and roll. Pat Riley sending on Michael Doliak. So Shaquille O'Neal sits down. He's got 26 minutes, four of seven, nine points, eight rebounds, but five personal fouls. Carter knocks down both have their biggest lead up by 12. Miami with 15 points in this third quarter. Carter has scored 14 for the Nets. That was a situation where they were probably going to try to get Shaq out of the game. There's Walker, and he is fouled. Foul on Robinson. Pat Riley never really got a chance on that set to get Shaquille out of the game quick enough. Once again, nice move there by Vince Carter to continue to go after Shaq when he was on the floor. Antoine Walker at the line. Miami, the 29th ranked team in the free throw shooting department. That's because of Shaquille O'Neal, who is only a 46% on the season. Walker just a 62% free throw shooter, and misses both. And that's amazing to me with Walker, with his ability to shoot the ball from long range, the three-point strike. Just a little lack of concentration. He should be better than that. Miami 5 of 8 at the line. That's up by 12. Eating that zone again. 2-3 look. Robinson getting it to Kristich. And a foul. Comes on Doliak. Miami over the foul limit. That'll put Robinson at the line. We touched on it earlier. Clifford Robinson, the last time these two clubs met, had a Nets career high 23. He was in the starting lineup for Nate at Kristich, who was out because of a bout with the flu. Vince Carter has certainly enjoyed all four games against Miami. He's played exceptionally well, including a, a triple-double, his first as a net, 51 points, which equal a career high. Now, Kristich sits down. Lamont Murray making his first appearance of the game. Kristich has played well. He came out early, hitting a shot. He is 5 of 7, 11 points. Overall, and the Nets now lead at 68-54. And with that lead, Lawrence Frank is trying to jockey his way through the third quarter to give some guys some additional rest. Walker played by Murray. Shot clock is down to five. There is Walker trying to go glass, but was off. And comes Jean Claude, who just checked back in, providing a rest for Jason Kidd. Vaughn running the team at the point. Smaller lineup that's been successful for them. And Murray had it knocked away, knocked out of his hands. Last touch by Miami. That's will have seven on the shot clock. And the small lineup forces teams to match up with them because you can do this with the large lead. 
Vaughn will inbound. Jefferson. Played tightly by Wade and lost it. The first turnover of the quarter for the Nets. Here comes Jefferson. It's a three on two. Vaughn kicks it out. Carter for three. Yes. Watch by Lightning right there. And another good decision by the guards. Got Vaughn that trip. Not out of control. It looked like he might have tried to flip up a wild shot, but understood exactly where Carter was on the floor. Vince Carter with 17 of his 27 here in the third quarter. Walker rebounded by Carter. Carter from way downtown. It was a two for one opportunity, but you're really talking about putting the nail in that coffin. Wow. 12 unanswered for the Nets. They've opened up a 20 point lead as Pat Riley took a timeout. 30 points for Carter. And I guess, Marv, it was only about 15 seconds ago when you said that Carter likes and has had a little bit of success against the Heat. You mentioned 51 points in one of the games with 20 points in this quarter. And things are just happening defensively for the Nets. Forcing the action. Look at Vaughn shaking, going down the lane, making it happen for Vince Carter from long range. And then here he just says, hey, I got some rhythm and yeah. confidence and just let it rip from long range. Is that what he's saying? <laughs> he's saying something out there. I don't know what it is. Wow. Well, Carter with 20 of his 30 points in the third. He has scored 20 of the Nets' 32 points in this third quarter. The Nets have outscored Miami 32 to 15, and they now lead it by 20. What an apropos time to talk about net tickets for next season. You can check out the <laughs> Nets early bird special. Our producer Frank DeGrace has such a feel. Next year, the Nets will be unveiling a new red road jersey, and it will be signed by Vince Carter. Purchase your full season tickets for next season. Do it now and get your jersey plus other exclusive early bird benefits. This offer available for a limited time and some restrictions do apply. Visit NJNets.com or call the Nets Vonage Hotline at 1-800-7-NJ-NETS. That's 1-800-7-NJ-NETS. I mentioned that uh, Vince has scored 20 or more in 17 straight with his performance here tonight, and he is closing in on his uh, own franchise record. He, uh, aiming for that Tuesday night, and the Atlanta Hawks come in. Antoine Wright checking in for the Nets for the uh, first time. 40 seconds to play in the first quarter. Wade guarded by Wright. There's Wade. And the foul is called. Foul on Wright. And the Nets are now over the foul limit. It's an easy assignment for Wright to sit on the bench for the better part of three quarters. And <laughs> you have to come out and try to stay with Wade. You'd like to go up the bench, but it's almost punishment for Lawrence Frank. Yeah, go in there and try to guard this guy. Wade is four for four at the line, a 78% free throw shooter. And I would think that Pat Riley will have a decision to make as to when to pull Wayne Wade. Usually the thinking is, let's see what we can do at the start of the fourth quarter when we get back into this game. Right now, it's an 18 point and leave. But remember, Dwayne Wade came into tonight with the bruised ribs, was a question mark up until about a half hour before game right. time. I would think they'll give him, you know, the five minute, you know, eight minute mark into that fourth quarter to see whether they can make their first run. 
Carter dumps it off to right. Here's Wright trying a reverse. Did not make contact with the rim. It's 24 seconds. Violation. Miami will get it back. Eight seconds to go in the third. This is where Miami will obviously try to get a bucket to give them a little bit of a positive to end this quarter. Nets need to stop here, keep their positive going. And here is Wade, accelerates and draws the foul. And again, call on right. That's the thing about Wade. You think for a moment that you've contained him to some extent, and then he has that next year notch of speed that he understands once you think you got, you're up with him. And Spacing is pretty good. He goes blowing right by you again. Has that deceptive move, the change of pace, several speeds. We saw that just a moment ago as he drew the foul. 29 for Wade. He's hit the 30 mark. Three seconds left in the quarter. Carter makes the catch and fires. After three, here at Continental Airlines Arena, it's the Nets 74, the Heat 58. Nets outscored Miami 32-19 in the third, led by Carter, who scored 20 of his 30 in the third. Attention, men with this. As we move on to the fourth quarter, here's the PokerRoom.tv game summary as the Nets Look to make a 12 straight wins. Wayne Wade with 30. The rest of the Miami Heat, 28 points on 13 of 36. And Vince Carter, 30 points, 6 assists. So the fourth quarter is underway. Here's Wade putting the move on Long. Beautifully done once again. And the Heat reacted to that double team attempt there by the Nets, but then the Nets actually switched it, and Wade recognized that he could just jump right over Jacques Vaughn in the lane. Robinson played by Doliak. Peyton out front, yeah. yeah. That is Salvador with uh, the call. It is on. Peyton, that's three on Peyton. Udonis Haslam will come back on now, replacing Michael Doliak. Lawrence Frank has a backcourt of Vaughn and Carter up front. Robinson with Jefferson and Murray. There's Carter drawing the double, trying to split through. Vaughn, way off, the air ball, played by Wade. Wade accelerates, looking for teammates as he's met by Jefferson. Maynard Kristich and Jason Kidd getting set to check back in. Here's DePaul, and he is stripped. It'll be Miami ball as Kristich and Kidd are waved on. See, and even with this 14-point lead, 11 minutes or so, you get the sense that Lawrence Frank is not taking this for granted. you got to expect that the Heat are going to make a run, and Lawrence understands that. He'll get Jason Kidd out there for the next four or five minutes at least. Wow. Way, way off, and then a Peyton is fouled by Vaughn. That's Carter taking a seat, so he'll rest for a while. Carter with 30 points. Peyton is arguing that he was shooting the ball. Vaughn saying that he was on the floor. Shooting the ball? You've got to be kidding. I know. I didn't see that either. <laughs> And it is a non-shooting foul. Wade with the beautiful fake. Jefferson did not go for it. Walker kept alive by Wade. Shaq, yes, and the foul. He'll be able to just check back in, taking that pass down low from Dwayne Wade, and Miami is down by just 12. And this is why Wade averages just under seven assists per game unselfishly directs the traffic from the free throw line to get it to O'Neal for an easy one below. Shaq only 46% at the line, hit his first free throw. And that's a lane violation. Shaquille O'Neal leads the world in drawing lane <laughs> violations because of that unorthodox motion, and guys always jump in, be it opposition or teammates. 
And he's able to hit the uh, the second try. He's no longer a player, but you know who used to be the best at that? Yeah, but anybody go through your mind? You'll, you'll recognize. Let me think about that for a while. I'll give you a second. All right, 9-0 run by Miami, and it's an 11-point lead. Here comes Walker off the steal. Walker all the way, and Lawrence Wright wants to call. Timeout called by the Nets. 11 unanswered by Miami. And Jefferson tried to get some action through the middle of the floor right here, but not happening, and Walker, just like Kidd does, took it down the other end for the deuce. Reminder this Tuesday on My Nine. The Nets continue their homestand. The Hawks and the Nets from Continental Airlines Arena. Game time at 7.30 on WWOR My Nine. All first-round Nets playoff games that are available to the S yes Network and then conflict with a Yankee game will be shown over the air on WWOR. Starting with the Nets and Hawks Tuesday night. Pose the the question as I mentioned Shaq drawing those lane violations. Who also excelled at that <laughs> and my guess would be Meadowlark Lemon. <laughs> Very nice guess. It's an old, old trotter trick. All right, here's Chris Kitch from out. Oh, you're talking NBA. NBA. All right, I give up. You give up. Yeah. Remember Chris Dudley? Oh. He was pretty good. You're right. At it. You're right. Because he had the herpy jerky. Herpy in the hitches at all? Didn't hit many free throws. No. <laughs> all right, here's Peyton. Crowd looking for a travel. 11 straight points for Miami. Wade to O'Neal. Now the question is, is that an offensive interference just then? That's what the net bench was yelling about. Oh boy, what a dandy of a pass if it wasn't by Wade. The lead is down to seven. Nets led by as many as 20. Here's Vaughn, rebounded by Haslam. Much different tone in this game right now over the last three minutes. You do the heat, we're not just gonna pack it up and get out of here. Pat Riley doesn't let them play that way and they have more pride. Peyton gets inside and is fouled by Vaughn. Well, here comes the little flip up. And yeah, the big guy is touching it outside. From that look, it was on the left side of the rim. Very, very close, but I think it's a good goal. 13 consecutive points by Miami. Make it 14. You get the sense more that a lot of people in this building thought this game was over at the end of the third. That's led by as many as 20. That lead is down to five. A 15-0 run by Miami. And how quickly things have turned. Vince Carter has checked back in. Here's Jefferson. Kristich cannot locate the shot. Jefferson for three. And back comes Miami. And see what the Heat is doing. They've switched to a pretty much exclusive zone right now, saying, hey, let the Nets, let's see if you guys can beat us from the outside in the half-court sets. Haslam. Nets have not scored since a minute 10 remained in the third quarter. Nets have missed their last seven shots. Make it eight straight. Shaq a factor again defensively, just holding his ground. Wade rebounded by Collins. Boy, Wade can't believe that he missed that shot. That's trying to stop this 15-0 run by Miami. Carter open for three. Yes. The 15 straight for the Heat. Boy, does he ever have the rhythm and the range going? And the ball is really rotating perfectly. Wade stripped by Carter. And a foul called on Peyton. That bucket by Carter from downtown. First points for the Nets in nearly five minutes of play. And it's the extra pass against the zone also. The Heat, for the first time in the last three minutes, did not react very quickly to extend to the perimeter. And Vince showing, obviously, that he can go extra long range. 
That's now lead 77, 69. Shot clock to six. Kid came up with it. Haslam with the rebound. Yeah, that pass actually intended for Kristich just then. It skipped right by him. See if they start getting shacks. There he goes. Some touches down on the blocks. Back playing with the five fouls. And is blocked and fouled by Collins. That's four on uh, Jason Collins. So Shaquille O'Neal will go back to the free throw line. Rather than give up that dump down low in the dunk, there's where Shaq kind of releases a little bit, gets a little bit of space that allows him to go to the line. But not bad, though. Not a bad foul by Collins. Put him on the line rather than have to dunk it on you. O'Neal is two of three. At the line, shooting just 46%, which is a career low for O'Neal. Uh, Gary Payton has been talking the whole time here to the official. Which is nothing new. <laughs> That's true. Gary, <laughs> Gary just <laughs> after I said that you're talks all night. <laughs> Jefferson. Trying to draw the foul on, on O'Neal. Jefferson was rocked by, <laughs> by Shaq. Heads up by eight, six and a half remaining. In the fourth quarter, O'Neal came out to set the pick. Wade gets it out to Peyton. Here's Peyton for three. Kept alive by Haslam. He's just a little quicker for the ball. Well, Kidd took it away. Kidd came from the blind side. Here's Kidd with a look away. Jefferson. Play by the and taking advantage of that turnover in the backcourt once again kid instrumental it really directed traffic a bucket that the nets really needed on the break in particular with the transition you'll see kid come from behind and then watch as soon as he gets it no outlet pass needed a little fake to your left give it to the right extra passing for jefferson Time for the Dunkin' Donuts fast break of the game. And when you can get one that's triggered in the backcourt, the key becomes getting as many guys to run the floor as possible. Here you see very good spacing by the Nets. The first two down the floor get out on the wings, and then Kitty can then make some judgments as a point guard, recognizing that I have the spacing on the floor and just a terrific dish there by Kristen's, the big guy running it. Not only are the fans up, but the teammates are also. So the Nets able to come back after Miami reeled off 15 unanswered. And the Nets have a lead back up to 10. Six minutes to play in the fourth. Walker from way off. Kid with the long rebound. Fires it down. Here comes Jefferson to the rim and draws the foul. Basket will not count. Jefferson will shoot two. Foul on Peyton, that's number five. Now, Kidd tells him to go. See, what Jason Kidd is saying right there to Richard Jefferson, Jefferson has his back turned, and he can't see where the defenders are going down the floor. So what Kidd does is he throws it to him at the same time he yells to him to take it all the way to give his teammate a little bit of an advantage to catch it blindly and then attack. Richard Jefferson out three of five at the line at 81%. Free throw shooter. Marv Albert, Jim Spinarco at Continental Airlines Arena. Just under six to go in the fourth quarter. The Nets try to make it 12 straight wins. They have won 21 of the last 24 here at home. And looking to take the season series from Miami. Three games to one. Here's Wade. He's been off. Beautiful delivery. Kid to Jefferson, not able to score. Rebounded by Haslam. Walker. Stopped by Jefferson. Stopped the ball, and Walker has to reset. A little different type of fast break than when Jason Kidd's running his. Here's O'Neal. Nice fadeaway shot by Shaq. Miami had missed 
its previous six shots. Nets now lead 80 to 71. Even though he doesn't hit his free throws, you would think that he would try to get the ball to Shaq a little bit more frequently in the next minute or two of this game. Carter for three. Yes. down that end of the floor. 36 points for Carter, 13 of 23 from the field. Haslam, Forston, rebound Kidd. Kidd on the run. Again, a look away. Christich, got it knocked away, broken up by Miami. So that's maintained possession. Uh, the Nets recognizing that there's a vulnerable team right now. The Heat kids really recognize it, that we can push the ball up the floor. He's telling his teammates, let's go, guys. Let's pick it up and really set the tone. Even though we tried to do that in the first half, we weren't successful with the fast breaks. It looks like they've found the spot now. Here is Carter this time from two-point range. A magnificent night for Vince Carter. 38 points, he's hit five from downtown, five of eight from beyond that three-point line. And he's given the Nets an 85-71 lead. Like the schedule of the Heat, I guess 82 oh. nights a year, huh? <laughs> Man. Wade trying to split through, and it was broken up. Here comes Kidd, behind oh. the front. <laughs> Jefferson takes it back from Haslam. Fires one up, that ends up bounding off the rim, an adventure. And Miami took a timeout. Did you call for Meadow Lark landing before? <laughs> I did. <laughs> that was not pretty. It'll be Miami ball. But the Nets in the midst of an 11-2 run and lead by, by 14. How about this sequence? Whoa. Oh, we got kicked <laughs> in the head. <laughs> Everything happened. <laughs> Jim, here's the play of the game presented by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% on car insurance. And when we talk about a dunk, we usually talk about the guy passing the ball, Vince Carter, but Hurstage really getting out and challenging Wade Wade with a terrific finish. And how about Vince Carter against Miami this season? 32, then 51 equaled his career high. 28, his lowest output, but that night he had a a triple double and thus far tonight 38 points including five from from downtown nice pass walker to o'neill and with three and a half remaining in this fourth quarter the nets lead at 85 73. interesting set just then by pat riley get my big guy away from the floor out the free throw line and then use it as a decoy and disguise it Sent by Pat Riley to come right back and call a play during the timeout to go upstairs to Vince Carter. 40 points for Carter. O'Neal spinning on Collins, rebounded by Preston. Carter with 30 of his 40 in the second half. And we still have 2.50 to go in the fourth. Preston. Blocked by Wade, that went off the official. Oh, man. Oh. And he took it in a bad spot. <laughs> he sure did. David Jones <laughs> with a save that he did not have in mind. Let's take a look up here, see what happens. And here comes Vince over the top. Oh. Look at the kid's delivery, though. He looks a little bit to his left as part of the decoy and puts it right on the money for the crank it up slam. David Jones saying, I'm all right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I believe that's what he said. It'll be net ball, eight on the shot clock. Kid will put it in play. That's up by 14. They've led by as many as 20. Carter wide open. It has been a magnificent night for Vince Carter who has 43 points, the Nets 90, the Heat 73. And Vince would love to see this clock be frozen right now and play all night. Walker from downtown. Antoine Walker has not shot well. 
is 4-12 from the field. The Nets now lead it 90 to 76. And Carter working the point. Kid moves out to the wing on the left side. Crowd wants Carter to shoot. Being played here by Derek Anderson. Right there. Oh, look out. Carter took a shot. Took the shot the side of the face and then took the shot. <laughs> Nearly put it down, too. Here's O'Neal working down low, and he is fouled by Collins. That's five on Jason Collins. Now here's that play where you see Carter got bumped a little bit. Sure did, right across with the arm. And just a little bit long on the shot attempt. Shot two of four at the line. Stick around after the... Final buzzer. It's the Nissan post game with Gordon Damer, Leslie Bogosian. And they'll take a look back at the uh, highlights from the Nets and Miami. They'll have player reaction scores from around the NBA. The Nissan post game right here on Yes. Once again, Shaq's limited free throw shooting. When you think about the playoffs and down the stretch, will come into play again this season. Here is Collins. With a minute and a half to play, and the Nets up by 14. Nets about to empty their bench. Well, Shaquille O'Neal remains on the floor. And a pushing foul on the Nets, who are over the limit. And here comes Scott Padgett, Antoine Wright. Most on knock bars on Planet standing ovation for the Nets starters. LeVon Murray has come on. Vince Carter with 43 points on 16 of 27 from the field. Foul was called on Collins. That's his sixth. And Shaq now two of seven at the line. The Philadelphia 76ers on their way to a victory over the Knicks in Philly. They're up by 19 in the final minutes. So the Nets will not clinch the Atlantic division tonight. Oh, Shaq way off. Miami maintains possession. The magic number will drop down to one with the net victory over Miami. Now Michael Doliak comes on for Shaquille O'Neal, who departs with 18 points, 8 of 12, shooting 2 of 8 at the line. Nine rebounds, 36 minutes of play as he made his return after sitting out games with the knee injury. And Marv, I thought it was interesting, even though Vince Carter had a, obviously a monster night tonight, Interesting how Lawrence Frank substituted for five guys just then. Almost kind of a unity type thing to bring them all off at once. How about LeBron last night? Uh, yesterday afternoon, I should say 47 against Miami. And then Vince Carter with uh, 43 as LeBron Murray missed by us. I'm sure Pat Riley feels delighted about uh, those numbers. <laughs> That's up 90 to 76. And the Nets holding Miami. And Walker is stopped in a foul. We have 40 seconds left in the game. Miami with just 76 points. They, they are sixth in scoring the NBA. They average 101 a game. They shoot 48%. They lead the NBA. So once again, the Nets have done a masterful job against one of the better teams in the league as they will make it 12 straight wins. Seven of those wins against playoff teams, eight of the 12 against Western Conference teams. Just at the top of their game, this will be win number 44. They'll go to 44 and 28, and they'll take the season series from Miami three games to one. And these two clubs, if they advance past the first round, can meet in the uh, second round of the, the postseason. Shot clock down to six. Here's Antoine Wright for three. Back comes Walker. Played by Murray. Walker on the spin. Foul by Patrick. 14 seconds to go. Antoine Walker. Antoine lost in the crowd. Went flying. Here's a look at the 12-game win streak that began against the Hornets in Oklahoma City. Remember, prior to this, the Nets had dropped five of six. They win at Houston. They beat Portland, beat the Lakers, Dallas, 
in a wipeout at Washington. Went over the T Wolves. Impressive back to back at Detroit, and they blew out the Phoenix Suns. Then the win over Memphis at Atlanta, and uh, the win here tonight against Miami. So Walker hits on both. Nets now lead 90 to 78. And the Nets able to withstand a 15 0 run by Miami as they got back into it. Standing ovation from this crowd. The Nets defeat the Heat 90 to 78. That's 12 straight wins. 22 of the last 25 here at home. The high point man, Vince Carter, 43, 16 to 27 shooting, including five from downtown. Vince also had six assists. Richard Jefferson with 16. Anette Christich with 11. Wayne Wade led Miami with 32 points on 12 of 26. As we look back at the longest win streaks in net franchise history, and the Nets now aiming at the 14 in a row. Two seasons back, that's when Lawrence Frank took over from Byron Scott. Let's go to Jim Spinarco with Vince Carter. Jim? Thanks, Mark. You know, when you look at the numbers, Vince, 32, 51, 28, 43, all against the Heat. What is it about the Heat that gets you turned on to play basketball at that level? I don't know. I mean, I just try to bring the energy against good teams. I know in my job is to guard Dwayne Wade. So on the other end, I have to bring the, the same intensity and mentality that he brings, you know, uh, on, on his end. So um, I just had good nights. You talk, You brought up the word intensity. You're starting to sense that some of these games now, especially on this streak against the quality teams, are starting to sound like and smell like playoffs. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. And uh, we just want to win them all, regardless of the record, what it says in their jersey. And it, it was just a, a great effort by everybody tonight. We stayed focused, and we, we just brought it from start to finish. Talk a little bit, Vince, about where you stand from a, a team standpoint here. It looks like there's a trust that's developing, not only like from yourself to the other four, but all five guys are seeming to trust one another. That was the most important thing, is just being able to trust each other. And I think if we trust each other, everything else falls into place. And um, we're trusting each other. We're gaining confidence. Uh, especially with Nina playing like he's playing and everybody else, our bench doing what they're supposed to do and, and really bringing it every night and just giving us a rest when we can. I mean, we're ready for we're, we're getting ready for the playoffs. Congratulations on a monster night. Thank you. Thank you. OK, Marv, I'm going to send it back to you at the table. All right. Thank you, Jim. As Vince Carter turned it on in the second half, finished with 43. He is our Chevy player of the game. ChevyOffers.com, the latest offers from Chevrolet 33 of 43 in the second half. Once again, he erupts against the Miami Heat. The Nets have made it 12 straight wins. They go to 44 and 28. Another impressive performance. They defeat the Heat 90 to 78.